Hello, I'm Rick Stavers. I'd like to welcome you back to Young Artin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Shakespeare. Uh, what is this thing? This is a uh, 2081. The badge is missing off of it, but you can just see through it where it used to say that it kind of stuck into the glue on the other side. So the 2081. Um, I think it's a. I think it was a Sea Wonder or something like that. Uh, Anyway, I'll have it posted on there. You'll see it. C. You can see it's C. Yeah, C Wonder. It's a C Wonder reel. Okay. And um, it's in reasonably decent shape. This one was gifted to me by Ken, the guy I do the repairs for all the time. He, uh, I told him I really like this reel, and he let me have it. And uh, this is going to become one of my... Uh, corpus reels that I take down there. Uh, it does have one problem, which I don't know if I'll be able to find a part for or whatever, but it's still functional without it. Uh, if you listen, there's no clicker for the drag. The pointer for that is broken off, and uh, I don't know what I'll be able to do about that. I might be able to actually make one, but I'd have to drill out the screw and put it, retap it, put a new screw in and everything. And uh, we'll see about that. But it, for now, let's go ahead. Let's start taking this thing apart. Kind of pull off the spool. And it's a little bit noisy. Let's turn the anti-reverse off. I'm going to try to grease that bearing well and see if that helps that. Um, it, uh, I want to try to quiet it down just a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and take the handle off. Okay. And... Yeah, there's a washer inside there. Don't lose that washer. It gives it the proper spacing that it's supposed to have. Okay. Let's go ahead and take out these three screws on this side. Okay, I like that. This this reel looks like a a large version of the uh, 2062 that I just did a few weeks back. Um, let's go ahead and take out this screw. And if this is the same, this should be uh, a reverse threaded screw. So we loosen it by, yes, turning it clockwise. There we go. Okay. And now this pin should come out, I hope. It may be a screw. It appears to be a pin. Uh, yeah, it's a pin. Pull out the pin, put that with the screw, and we'll set the arm over in there. And we should be able to pull out now on the axle shaft. Remove the axle shaft, like so. And now we can take that arm and set it over there. So all three of those parts are together now. See if there is a washer on top of this. Yes, there is. There is a washer on top that goes with that arm right there. So don't get that separated and lose it. And let's take out the main gear. Well, it came, comes almost all the way out. And then it stops. Something's hanging it up. I wonder... If it's this screw right here. I don't think so, but it might be. Let's go ahead and take this screw out. This is supposed to be an oiler hole. Okay, let me just set that over here. That's not long enough to have caused any grief. Okay, so that didn't cause any problem. Uh, so what is causing the grief?
I wonder if it's just a grease buildup on the shaft. There we go. That's all it was. It was sliding up until... Let's see what we got here. This piece has got to lock onto this shaft over here like so. There we go. That's your anti-reverse. And then this washer, shim washer goes up there. Yeah, there's a lot of old dirt in there. Uh, but yes, this part right here was catching in that bushing right there. All right. So this part looks pretty good. The uh, Looks like we got a little bit of wear on the anti-reverse cog. Kind of like each tooth is just a little bit worn down. Um, let's see. Anti-reverse, there it is right there. If you need to see how it is set up for the springs. We will zoom in so that you can see how those springs are in there. If you look, I'm not going to take this apart, but if you look, you've got a clip right here that's holding this washer on. And then we've got this major spring here comes down and does a wrap around and it's hooked under the spring right here that's giving the spring this forward tension that it has so that when you flip this like so yeah see there see how that's hooked on it right there okay so it just goes up and around and the other end goes right here on this tag okay and then this lever back here has just got this spring here that fits up inside it from the tag in from the back so that you should be able to see all of those pretty well yeah there's that spring there's this spring comes in from the bottom not from the top it comes in from the bottom and then this was just a clip that holds this on but you shouldn't have to take any of this off to clean this all of this should be okay to leave right where it's at back out all right here we go we're going to remove the rotor now we're going to take this nut off okay go and that comes off and we should be able to remove the rotor at this point uh, or at least it would seem that we should be able to I'm gonna screw the nut back on to the top to make sure that I don't flare it any and I'm going to tap this there we go I've got it down that far and I don't think plastic's going to damage the brass so okay there we go come off all right now we got under here this is our trip lever and it appears that I may end up having to take this trip lever out I don't want to but I think I'm gonna have to just to get it clean but it seems to be functioning well so maybe I'll be able to just oil it good and clean the rust off the outside edges of it and oil it good and I think it'll probably be all right to leave in there. It's got a coil spring up under here and a pin and we don't want to have to try to drive that pin out. This is a cast aluminum and I'm afraid we might crack it taking that out. That's pretty simple though. I like the way it's made and we there's no grit or grime feeling to this so we're just going to be able to lube it and put it back together and get that going all right let's see what we got here all right we still got this noisy front bearing so to get to that we're going to have to take these three nuts out i think and uh these two across the top there on this what would be the dot bottom side if you're holding it the reel mounted on the reel or on the rod 
And uh, let's see what size those are. Okay. Yep, watch the washer. Okay. All right, put that washer back on the nut or on the screw. Set it over to the side. We've got two more that hopefully we can get onto. There we go. Got onto that one. Now there is no washer under this one. Okay. And got one left over here. There we go. And that releases the ramp. And it takes the ramp off. Set that over there. Now this bottom should come off, which should lead us down here to the bearing. And hmm. let's slide this on for a minute. Put the nut back on and see if we can pull that bearing out with a little bit of slide action. All right, let's back up and do a little cleaning and see if we can figure out if something's hidden here that I'm not seeing. Like a side screw, some kind of bearing, anything that holds this in. Okay, this is a sealed bearing they have on the front of here. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to snake the seal out. All right, I'm back. This is uh, about 10 hours later and uh, quite a bit of frustration later. But I do have this taken care of now. And I'm gonna show you what I ended up having to do. I tried all kinds of things. I tried putting the rotor on and using the rotor as a hammer. I tried everything in the world that I could try. And I finally, yeah, see I had the, the rotor on like this and then with the nut on, and I was using it as a hammer trying to buy, pull it out. I tried tapping on it with a block of wood and a soft hammer, uh, none of that worked. Um, what I ended up having to do was back up to my old jeeping days, was repairing vintage Jeeps, and uh, I had this slide hammer, doo -doo 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 -doo, okay, that I made for removing parts on that Jeep, and I used it here. I typically try not to do things, use tools that other people won't have, but most people can really get a slide hammer if they really need one. Um, I went looking for a secondary nut because this nut is so thin. Okay, I was afraid I would tear it up. But I ended up not being able to find one that fit. I did find one that I could slip over and use as a backup to this nut. And uh, then I was able to tighten it down a little bit snug it down, put the slide hammer on it like so, and then perform the sliding motion. And at first it did not work. I had to come back and judiciously 
go to applying heat. And I had to do this so that I uh, was careful not to blister the paint. I could only get it just so hot. I did not want to blister the paint on the reel. So I carefully went about applying heat around the outside of the bearing. And then I went back to my slide hammer and was able to pull it out. Okay. This bearing was in not very good condition, as you heard earlier, but I spent the next three hours soaking it and blowing it out with uh, compressed air. And I now have it reasonably usable. Once I did that, the bearing actually turned freely and made minimal noise, but I have since taken and packed this bearing. Now, how do you pack a uh, sealed bearing, you might ask? Well, normally you wouldn't be able to, but this bearing is old and this seal is pretty much worn out, which is why I was able to blow WD-40 in there and uh, be able to keep blowing it out. And I was able to spin this bearing up using compressed air on the shaft. I would sit it on here like so and spin it up with compressed air. And then once it spun up for about a minute, I would stop and then blow compressed air in around here and it would blow all the slime that was inside the bearing out. And once I got it to where the WD-40 started coming back out after that, clear, then I knew I had pretty much cleaned as much rust as I could get out of it. And at that time, this bearing, I could spin it and it made a little bit of noise, but it would spin for a good 15, 20 seconds. Uh, then I came back and I took grease and I took the grease and I packed it into the bearing by putting it on each side of it and then compressing it with my finger and thumb like that. And I just kept adding grease and compressing adding grease and compressing until I felt like I had a pretty good bit of grease down inside the bearing. And as proof of that, it slowed the bearing way down, which is going to make this reel run a lot slower than it would have. But I don't have to listen to the rattle of that noisy bearing. And I think that's a fair trade. I've considered, and I still might, Go ahead and order a replacement for this. Uh, but for now, since I'm planning to go to the coast, to go fishing on the coast, I'd kind of like to be able to take this reel with me down there. So that's what I'm kind of shooting towards. See if I can get it up and running and have it ready for this coming weekend. Get all the excess grease out. And now that bearing is pretty tight and it makes virtually no noise with all that grease in there. Okay, slide it on. But now I still need to clean the pinion itself. That pinion is really nasty. And this stuff is caked in there. It, I've scrubbed it twice already and it still looks that bad inside. So I'm gonna pop off the bearing for now and I'm gonna go clean all these parts up, get them ready. And when I come back, we'll see about putting this beast back together. Okay, I'm back, and it looks like things are pretty well cleaned up, so it's time to start reassembling. So we're gonna start off with the pinion gear, and that, uh, it's been inspected. Let's see if I can blow that up so you can see it. There you go, pinion gear looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back in. I'm gonna remember to blow it back out this time. Okay, now onto the pinion gear is going to go our freshly greased bearing, and then we're going to slide it down inside. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and grease it first. That way we can put grease on the end here where it's going to have to fit through the housing. And then we'll go ahead and grease the pinion gear itself. We're going to put the pinion gear back inside the case with the main bearing. Like so, and we're going to install this shim. Next, we're going to reinstall this base plate, which should go 
basically like, I'm trying to see the old shadow of where the plate was, yeah. Okay, it's gonna go on like so. Slide it down, line up the holes like so. All right, and then we're gonna put our ramp in and it's time to start matching up the screws. And these are hex head screws. I'm just gonna make them just a little bit more difficult to get started. With a regular screw screw, I can just use a screwdriver to start it. With these, they're a little bit more difficult than that. It's popped up, put it back down. Okay, I'm trying to get this where you can see, although I don't know that it's really necessary to see me physically screw the screw in. Okay, it's got those two, and then we've got this last one over here. It's gonna go in, it's got this little washer on it. Slip that on. And let's get it started. Okay, once these are started, we can go back and use our nut driver and snug them up. Okay, and I'm gonna go back and give each one just a little bit, just to make sure that they're tight. All right, that's back together. Okay, we're ready to Look at the uh, rotor again. Now remember, the rotor is in good shape. It didn't have any grit or anything up underneath the head of the screws. Um, I feel that they're in good shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and oil them. On each end. And oil the roller. Make sure it's turning and it is. Okay, now, you remember this trip release was really corroded before, and I kind of hit it a bit with a uh, with some Scotch-Brite to try to clean it up, and uh, it cleaned up a lot, but this is the part you kind of have to keep an eye on because it uh, it's going to be exposed to water and stuff as you wind it in, and uh, it's down below, so you kind of don't notice it. So it's something you have to kind of watch out for, keep an eye on. Once you put that oil in there, maneuver it around a little bit, like so. Trip it, make sure it trips okay, and it does. And let's go ahead and see about getting it put on. Now, the rotor itself is just gonna slip on, and it's not keyed to the um, pinion shaft. But we have this locking plate right here, which again, this is a little corroded looking too, but it's been cleaned up as best I could. I probably could take it and put it on the wire wheel, but I think this is sufficient. Okay, we're gonna slide that on in there. Now the rotor is locked to the pinion shaft. Okay, and at that point is when we're gonna come back now and screw the nut back on. over tighten it okay again bearing's a little bit noisy but it's functional okay I'm gonna trip this back now and make sure that the bail trips and it does okay I'm ready to move on at this point I think it's time to go ahead and reinstall the main gear we're gonna put that in with this anti-reverse uh, wheel over here. And if you look, there's a washer in there. There you go, get the washer out. Okay, if you look on this side, it, it's a flat side. On this side is the beveled side. The beveled side's gonna go out, okay, like so. And then you rotate this around and get it to fit on the gear, like so. Okay, once that's done, put the washer back on. And at that point, we can go ahead 
and grease the gear. We're going to put a little bit on the anti-reverse just because it's it's showing some wear back here. Or that claw drags along it. So we're going to put some grease on it just to kind of ease that up a little bit. And now we're going to go back and we're going to oil the main gear. And we're going to oil the hole that the main gear fits in. Slide this back inside, like so. Okay. With that in, I'm going to go ahead now and install the handle. Don't forget to put your washer back on. That's a spacer. Okay, let's go ahead now and get the handle restarted. I think we have trapped the anti-reverse claw underneath. There we go. Now let's tighten that down. There we go. Okay, we're sitting on top of the anti-reverse claw. Okay. And again, it could still use a new bearing, and I'm probably going to go ahead and order one. Now that I see how loud it still is, I'm probably going to go ahead and order one. All right, now we're gonna come back, reinstall this washer here. And this arm here, set that back into place. And now we're gonna put the screw back into the hole. Like so. And remember, this is reverse threaded, so you've got to go counterclockwise to tighten this back in. We're not going to tighten it all the way down just yet. We're going to leave it loose because now we're going to come back and reinstall the axle shaft. Let's go ahead and lube it with some oil. Slide that in. Line it up down here. And we're going to line it up for the pin. We got to get that pin to go in the hole. It's easier sometimes to go ahead and use something pointy like this ice pick to line it up first and then put your pin in. go and now all of that should be functional at that point and I happen to think that still looks a little dry on the pinion gear so I'm going to add some grease Do it again. Okay. And we're going to go back now and tighten that nut. Remember, this was a spare that I brought from downstairs. All right. Let's put the side plate back on.
Now, if you go back to here, remember earlier we took out this screw because I thought it might be holding something. Well, it's not. It's an oil port. Let's go ahead and put some oil in there for the main gear or for the crankshaft. And then we'll reinstall that screw. Okay, I think we're ready now to go through the rotor. I'm saying sorry, the spool. Clean it up. Now see, we're missing our clicker off the bottom of this of this uh, spool. So I'm going to try to see if I can locate another spool or make some kind of a clicker to go on here. And I'll, if I do that, I'm going to have to drill that out, get me a new screw in there. Okay, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and clean up these drag washers. So we're going to hook the spring up in there. I'm going to put my thumb on it so it doesn't pop out. Now that spring is really kind of rusty. That's, I might make a new one to go in there. That's pretty nasty looking. Okay. Although it doesn't really do anything except hold these in place until the, not, until the knob is on. All right. Here we go. There's our drag stack, which consists of a drag washer, a keyed washer, another drag washer, an eared washer, and a keyed washer, and, or sorry, another drag washer and a keyed washer. All right, I'm going to wipe all these off. I'm going to wipe out that spool, and we're going to reassemble that real quick, get it back together. All right, we've got that all cleaned out now, and we're ready to start putting it together. We're gonna put a little, use a little Cal's Universal drag grease on this, and uh, that'll, we don't wanna put a lot, we just wanna put a little. Okay, so we're gonna put a little down, oop, that's a lot. Okay, we're gonna put a little down inside here. Okay, and then we're gonna put some on the drag washer itself, and then slip it in. Okay, drag washer's in. All right, now we're going to put the keyed washer in. We don't need to add any grease to that. The lubrication that's on the drag washer itself should be sufficient. Okay, we're going to add a little here. There we go. Put that one in. And now we're going to put the eared washer in. And the little tabs on the side of the eared washer have to fit into the grooves in the hole. Okay. There we go, like so. We're going to put the last drag washer in. Slide it down. And put in the last keyed washer. And I'm going to add a little grease to the top of that just to help keep those from getting corroded in the salt water. Finally, we're going to put this crusty spring back in that really isn't hurting anything that it's rusty. Uh, all it does is hold those in place until we can install this on the reel. And as long as the spring doesn't break, we're okay. Okay. There we go. That's locked in place. Let's try to drop the spool back in place. And make sure it's lined up. And we're ready to install the drag knob. Okay, and there we have the Shakespeare Sea Wonder 2081. I think it's 81. Yep, 2081. Serviceable. It's still a little rough sounding because of that bearing, but uh, I think I'm going to end up ordering a new bearing online. What I'm going to do is take the measurements on that. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do that in just a few minutes and I'll post them right here. So that if somebody else wants to order a set of bearings and don't have access to shape, original Shakespeare parts, they can go online somewhere and uh, order one uh, just by the size. 
So Okay, before I put it into the video, I wanted you to see that I actually did put a clicker in here. I found this old uh, Spin Master 3300 3, spool sitting downstairs. And uh, I didn't really feel like I was going to find a home for it anytime soon. And it did have a good clicker in it. So I stole the clicker out of that. Drilled out the screw for this one. And I've adapted it over. And uh, let's see how it works. What do you think? All right, so now the Shakespeare has a clicker. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but tell me what you didn't like about it. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this and aren't currently subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's, young, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.